things to be pulled off of the agenda. May I have a motion to approve the agenda? Move to approve. Support. All right, presentation. We have a proclamation. Um, Mary, you have to vote on the agenda. Oh, I'm sorry. It was a, I'm sorry, it was a, uh, when I heard this report, I was thinking, this moved ahead. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. All right, let's move on to presentation. Uh, we have a proclamation. Uh, and I will read that. Hispanic Heritage Month proclamation. Whereas Hispanic Heritage Month began as a commemorative week, first introduced in June of 1968 by California Congressman George E. Brown, and whereas President Lyndon B. Johnson followed by declaring Hispanic Heritage Week nationally in that same year, and whereas in 1988, President Ronald Reagan expanded the declaration to a month, and whereas the Hispanic American population has grown to be over 60 million in the United States and makes up the largest minority group in the nation, and whereas the Hispanic community has made a great impact on the nation through their contributions in art, food, music, religion, and service, and whereas Hispanic and Latinx make up 5.6% of Michigan's population and the increase from 4.4% in 2010, and whereas Michigan is, a for is fortunate to have such a large population of Hispanic Americans that has impacted its economy through business growth, innovative ideas, job creation, and many other contributions that affects the daily lives of Americans. And whereas it is important to highlight and or recognize achievements of Hispanic Americans as they continue their efforts in enhancing our communities. Now, therefore, I, Lois Allen Richardson, Mayor of the City of Ypsilanti, hereby proclaim September 15th through October 15th 2022 as Hispanic Heritage Month, given under my hand and seal of the city of Ypsilanti, September 27, 2022. Lord Allen Richardson, Mayor. I so proclaim. We have another um, proclamation. Um, Mr. Helena, do you have that ready? Uh, yes, it's uh, Council Member Sweet will be reading that uh, proclamation. All right, thank you. All right, this is a proclamation in tribute and honor of Judy Ypsilanti Thrift Shop. Um, be it known to all, the city of Ypsilanti pays tribute to honor to the Ypsilanti Thrift Shop. The Ypsilanti Thrift Shop, a nonprofit 501c3 charity, has helped and served the Ypsilanti area for over 80 years. During that time, the all volunteer organization has provided affordable, gently used clothing and household items to our community and donated hundreds of thousands of dollars to various local organizations, including Hope Clinic, Ypsilanti Meals on Wheels, Friends Indeed, Food Gatherers, Washtenaw Community Mental Health, and Feeding His Sheep. Because of the efforts of the thrift shop volunteers, thousands of disadvantaged persons have been able to obtain affordable clothing and household goods to improve their lives. The Ypsilanti Thrift Shop renovated a donated warehouse at 14 South Washington Street in downtown Ypsilanti for its retail store, and the store is a valuable addition to the downtown streetscape. The 69 members of the group donated an average of 6,700 hours of work per year to help the underserved in the Ypsilanti area. Now, therefore, the Council of the City of Ypsilanti hereby proclaims Friday, October 7, 2022, as Ypsilanti Thrift Shop's 80th anniversary day, and encourages everyone to join in commending all past and present volunteers for their valuable for their many valuable contributions to the community. And I so proclaim. Your Honor, I believe that there's a representative of the thrift shop here this evening. Okay. If there is, please come forward, come up to the mic, please. And tell us your name and if you'd like to say a few words about the thrift shop. I'm Nancy Hamilton. I'm the president of the Ypsilanti Thrift Shop. And uh, we're all very proud to serve the community and hope to continue on for another 80 plus years. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you.
former member of the thrift shop, and I, I stopped when I was taking some classes, uh, I'd like to say that I see a large uh, one uh, charity that we, or one organization that um, I didn't know at that time, we donated a lot to, or to people that were uh, leaving was Dawn Farms. So are you still uh, servicing the people that leave Dawn Farms? Okay, I know that was that was a biggie, and also helping with uh, DTE deals. Yes, we <laughs> we 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 help individuals who are having difficulty meeting their utility bills, or um, as other other incidental expenses that might present emergencies in their lives, and um, we help keep them in housing and in in their jobs. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Any of the other ladies like to have a word? Yes, no? you are. <laughs> This uh, should we just wait until all of this yeah, ladies? We will present that to you when all of the uh, the other council people have an opportunity to sign it. And I just want to encourage you to keep up the, the good work. I really enjoy the times that I work there, and um, you do the excellent work. Thank you. And we will when we when we receive the um, the document, we will frame it and hang it with pride in the shop. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, next on the agenda, we have uh, public comment. Do we have anyone in the audience that would like to, or on screen, that would like to have um, address council? I see now, and uh, Mr. Halinga, is there anyone uh, on screen? Um, if anyone attending virtually like would like to make comment, please raise your hand now. Uh, Mayor, no hands have been raised. All right, thank you. Uh, we're moving right along. Um, Ms. Simmons, I believe you have the uh, consent agenda. Resolution number 2022-226, dissolved by the Council of the City of Ypsilanti, that the following items be approved. Resolution number 2022-227, approving the minutes of September 13, 2022, City Council meeting. And resolution number 2022-228, approving ordinance number 1403, an ordinance entitled an ordinance to impose a moratorium on issuance of new marijuana permits for sale or dispensing of marijuana in the city of Ypsilanti for 180 days. Second reading, I so move. Support. It's been moved and supported. Uh, Mr. Hillen, would you call the vote? Mayor Richardson? Yes. Council Member Sweet? Yes. Council Member Simmons? Yes. Mr. Jones Chance? Yes. Motion carries with four yes, three absent. Thank you. Okay, uh, resolution. Number 2022-229. I believe you have that, Mr. Sweet. I do. Uh, resolution number 2222-229, resolved by the Council of the City of Ypsilanti, whereas the City of Ypsilanti recognizes the importance of a warming center during the cold, harsh winter months in Michigan and seeks to assist our most vulnerable. And whereas the City operates the Ypsilanti freight homes and generates revenue to help support the ongoing maintenance and community purpose of the space. And whereas the investment in a warming center at the freight house is part of a broader strategy to prioritize community health collaboration with community partners like the County Shelter Association and the Ypsilanti Downtown Development Authority. And now, therefore, be it resolved that the Ypsilanti City Council approve the Memorandum of Understanding with the Shelter Association of Washtenaw County 
to support the warming center operation beginning in November 2022 and ending in April 2023. And I so move. Support. Is they moved and supported? Any comments or questions or discussion? Mr. Johnson. Yes. Um, so uh, there has been a slight development here in that um, uh, we potentially been able to arrange uh, for overnight uh, overnight uh, shelter for um, well through uh, St. Luke's Church potentially. Uh, we're not meeting until tomorrow with the Shelter Association and uh, Mr. Jacobs. So um, if staff has a recommendation of what we should do with the current MOU, just in case uh, budget changes or location changes, I don't know that uh, St. Luke's isn't willing to do a daytime, um, but might be worth the ask. Okay, are you saying that there is a place that's willing to provide overnight lodging? Uh, yeah, there's some potential there. Um, I had a meeting with the interim director of the church last week, and uh, we're doing another meeting tomorrow. So um, it's still preliminary stages, so I'm not sure if there will be overnight yet, um, but we'll know more tomorrow. So I'm not really sure what we should do with the current MOU, um, if we want to um, approve it and maybe do some modifications later, or if we want to table it. Or... Yeah, as you we and I was thinking about this, and I think um, I probably would prefer if we went ahead and dealt with this, and then after um, you find out what's going to happen as far as the shelter, the overnight stay is concerned, that we deal with that um, separately or we bring it back at the end. That's my preference. Christopher, do you have any thoughts? I agree with you, Francis. I think um, this agreement, it solidifies what we've been able to do last year, which was really successful. And I think that any amendments that we make to the daytime warming shelter location or additional services would have to be quoted, um, you know, probably with the Shelter Association of Washtenaw County. Um, and so I think that collaboration can happen after this is approved. Um, so I agree with you, Francis. Okay, and you said that that was, did I hear you mention the St. Luke's was a possibility? Yes. St. Luke's here on here, please. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, just want to, I agree with that also that I think we should go ahead with this uh, that is before us and then treat that as a separate item. Did you have something to do? Yeah, I, I just wanted to thank um, staff and I wanted to thank Councilman O'Brien, the ch general's chance for um, making this a priority and getting on it, you know, um, so that we're prepared for the cold weather. So um, I'm especially appreciative because we have not um, ever come this close to maybe an overnight. And I think we were very successful last year. We had some kinks, but um, the Shelter Association and the city, you know, kind of worked together to make it better. So I believe this time around it's going to be really better. So I just kind of wanted to just give those shout outs to um, staff and also to um, Council Member Jones Chance for making this a priority. Here, here. I agree with that. Thank hey. you very much for taking that on, uh, Mr. Jones Chance. Hey, what's up? Are we doing for the least of these? Right. <laughs> Are there any further uh, comments or questions, discussion? I do believe, do we have a, a representative here from the Shelter Association? We do. Dan is available to answer any questions. This agreement is basically the same agreement, uh, but $3,000. Um, is the cost additionally for the same scope of services. Um, so other than that, same agreement as we approved last year, uh, Monday through Thursday um, until six o'clock. I didn't get his name, but would you like to have a word or two? Yeah. Yeah, hi there. Um, I, I think it's my a chance to speak. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mayor and Council. Um, my name is Dan Kelly. I'm the director of the shelter. I'm really appreciative of the partnership. Uh, as Christopher mentioned last year, it was very successful. We served almost 200 people through the daytime warming shelter. 
Uh, and it was a great opportunity to bring people into a broader array of services, whether that's housing, food, uh, through partnership with food gatherers, um, and then other supportive services. So it's a good entree into the community in terms of supporting some of our most vulnerable residents and uh, very appreciative of the partnership and looking forward to another successful year as we things start to get colder. We really need the shelter. And um, we're very glad to partner with the city here. Thank you so much. Thank you. And as we all can attest to, it's getting colder earlier this year than usual. Is that your hand up, Mr. Johnson? Yes. Uh, yes, I was uh, looking through the summary of the RFL. Um, it's like the current agreement was for 41825 with an increase of about $3,000. Uh, but in the second to last paragraph, um, the total cost is listed as fifty-four thousand or fifty-four thousand five sixty-seven. Should that be forty-four thousand? No, it is. It is the fifty-four. Last year approved was about fifty-one, um, oh, and then. Sorry, then no, then no, that no. is it, it. Should read fifty-four is the total cost. Um, up from 51. Yeah, okay, I was looking at a different number. Thanks. So we're looking at 54,000. Oh, okay, thank you. Anything else? Okay. No, if not, uh, would you call the roll, please, Mr. Helena? Mayor Richardson? Yes. Council Member Sweet? Yes. Council Member Simmons? Yes. Mr. Jones Chance? Yes. Four yes and three absent. The motion carries. All right. Thank you. Uh, next on the agenda is the Police Advisory Commission uh, nomination for um, <clears throat> Mr. Anthony Morgan. And he's applying. And when Mr. Morgan was on council, he served as council liaison. Uh, I don't know that. Um, we need to carry this over. Um, I believe Mr. Uh, Barra, we can vote on this tonight. Yes, Your Honor. All right, thank you. I'd like to have a motion to, uh, for us to vote on this tonight rather than carry it over. Uh, I move to appoint Anthony Morgan to the Police Advisory Commission. Support. It's been moved and supported. Any questions, comments, discussion? Seeing none, would you call the roll, please? Mayor Richardson? Yes. Council Member Sweet? Yes. Council Member Simmons? Yes. Mr. Jones Chance? Yes. Motion carries with four yes, three absent. All right, thank you. Okay, next is Board and Commission Communications. We've been trying to meet with, have a joint meeting with the uh, Police Advisory Commission, and we uh, I think set up set two or three times and then we've had to change the date. So we have some other dates that have been presented to us, October the 4th, the 18th, and November the 2nd. Um, I believe Mr. Hellinger. So these are the num uh, the dates that the Police Advisory Commission did forward. However, October 4th is just next week. Right. October 18th is the joint meeting with uh, the planning commission. So, and then November 2nd would be the Wednesday following the first meeting in November. Okay, so that would be the only time, only one of these days that would actually be. Um, in next, the fourth is very, very close. But we could do that if you want it. But there is. Suggestion or motion, Mr. Jones Chance? Um, I, I would say if, if it's not a problem with staff, but why I propose the fourth, um, and I, I would assume that they are the ones making that any kind of presentation if they can be ready by then. So I would agree with them. Um, I'm, I'm not entirely sure that they have an agenda in mind. Um, so that would be. It, it might be difficult to put something together. That would be on the, the mayor and the chair of the body. They have been, um, the chair 
um, Ms. Walcott and I, we have been talking. So there is a tentative agenda um, that just needs some final touches. So. With the uh, additional person now on the body, it, it, there would probably be needing a need for a larger space. So we'll have seven plus now five, or I'm sorry, six. Wait, I missed part of it. We'll have five and then plus seven. So that's gonna be 12 people. We could put tables on the end if that's what council desires, and I'm happy to do that, but that is, it, it will be a little bit, little bit uh, stuffed in here. Do we need, is it possible we can have a joint meeting at the senior center? I, I do not know if that the, the space is available yet. Okay. Um, city manager. I was just wondering if we needed the uh, council members that were absent to weigh in on, you know, their availability to be, uh, to be there. I know I can do that Tuesday. I can't. Could you? Use I, your mic? I can do that Tuesday, but that Wednesday, November second. Unfortunately, I have a conflict. Okay. Um, Perhaps it makes sense to see if we can do it on the 18th. Half of the meeting would be with the Planning Commission, the other half with the Police Advisory Commission. How much is on the agenda for the uh, Planning Commission? It's essentially just to discuss what what the plans are with Chapter 7 and the Mizzoting Coda that is attached to Chapter 7. Wait, now that was, it was muffled. It has to do with chapter seven and then the zoning code that is attached to chapter seven. I think that, well, that's the only thing. I think the marijuana discussion might be late too. Yeah. I think so too. Well, I just, let's set it for the fourth and then if we find out that others cannot, I will speak with uh, Ms. Walcott this evening after this meeting. And if we find out um, that we would not have a quorum to meet with them, then we can um, we can change it. So. We have a motion to do that. Has this been noticed? This has been noticed. This is a regular city council date, so it will just yeah, we we'll just add that to the agenda. Mr. Jones, can she hit the yeah? I would I would move to add that to the agenda. Move to add the uh, YPAC joint meeting to the agenda for October 4th. Right. It would actually be a separate meeting. No, this would be, that's the same date as the next council meeting. That's the same day as what? Our next council meeting. Oh, okay. Okay, I thought our council meeting was the Okay, it is the fourth, yeah, the third or third. <clears throat> okay, it's been moved. Is there support for that? Support. Okay, it's been moved and supported that we add uh, a joint meeting with the uh, Police Advisory Commission to the uh, October 4th agenda. Um, Mr. Any more discussion? Would you call the roll, please, Mr. Mr. Helena? Council Member Sweet? Yes. Council Member Simmons? Yes. Mr. Jones Chance? Yes. Mayor Richardson? Yes. Motion carries with four yes, three no. Thank you. Okay, Board and Commission Liaison Report. Three yes. Uh, three yes. Correct. No one is here for the Police Advisory Commission or um, Human Relations Commission, Arts Commission. And it brings us down to Parks and Recreation, Mr. Sweet. Yeah, so Parks and Recreation hosted their Fall River Day event last Sunday, the 25th. Um, we had about 140 people take advantage of free kayak trips down the river, um, as well as interact with other uh, local Ypsilanti and uh, Washtenaw County vendors um, and exhibitors. So it was a little dicey with the weather, but we missed most of the rain and everyone that came out had a really enjoyable time. So. Very good, thank you. Sustainability Commission, I believe 
that person's not here. Historic district. Nothing to report. Nothing to report. Uh, planning commission. Uh, I have nothing to report either. Was that September meeting, Nancy? Okay. Okay. Um, zoning board of appeals. Um, I did not attend that meeting. So one. Is there a staff person here that attended that meeting? No. No. Oh, thank you. oh, and uh, there is a, a ZBA meeting on the third. Um, yes, on the third. Oh, ZBA. Okay. Thank you. All right. Is anyone here from the bicentennial? Uh, I guess it's me and Jennifer. Um, I uh, I attended the uh, event. It went quite well. Sort of attended. I was bartending. Um, Went well, everyone uh, seemed to have a good time, and um, I'm not sure of the total amount of money raised, but it looks like um, uh, the bicentennial celebrations being underway will be well attended. So, looking forward to a, a good 2023. All right, very good. Thank you. Liaison report, CENCOB update. Um, I was out of town last week and did not attend the CENCOB uh, meeting. However, on I believe it's October the 14th. Let me check the date. Um, is the General Assembly. The General Assembly is usually held in the afternoon. However, this uh, General Assembly is going to be held um, daytime. It's going to start at 8.30. Nine registration eight thirty and nine o'clock. Um, I'm sorry, it is the third, the thirteenth, which is the Thursday, October the thirteenth, and it starts at registration starts at eight thirty and the meeting starts at nine and it goes from nine to two. Uh, so if there's anyone that is interested, I can give you more information on that. Um, General assemblies are usually um, very, very informative. They have lots of uh, trainings during those meetings. So if anyone is interested, please let me know. I'll give you the rest of the information. Uh, Washington Area Transportation Study. They canceled the meeting again. So, so I think no, no meeting. No meeting. Okay, thank you. Urban counties. Out of town on that city report. Okay, thank you. It's the uh, Downtown Development Authority. Uh, Mr. Is Mr. Jacob still there? I know they had a meeting last Thursday. He is not. He's not. Uh, Mr. Myers, do you have any report on that? Okay, thank you. Um, I wasn't able to attend because I was out of that part. And Rutherford Pool, Mr. Wilcoxman is not. Uh, Available. Okay. I can give a quick update on that if you want. Okay, thank you. <laughs> um, from our last Parks and Rec meeting um, in regards to the pool. So they're still wrapping up um, some closing things now and already starting planning for the summer 23 season and are expecting, hopefully, not guaranteed, um, funding from Trinity Health, St. Joe's, and the Huron Clinton Metro Parks again for free youth swim lessons uh, for kids for the next um, summer season. So that's what they're expecting, but it's not yet confirmed. So that is they're looking forward to and, and planning on um, right now. So, all right, thank you. Um, okay, um, is Mr. Joe Rutherford still very active with that? I don't think he is. Um, he was a member of the board for a while, and I think he has since stepped down. And I think he sometimes makes appearances, but not as engaged as he once was. No, okay, thank you. I know, uh, he used to be quite active and did. It lots of um, well, lots of passes and things for the children. Okay, uh, that brings us to council proposed business, and we'll start with you, Mr. Sweet. I don't have anything. Ms. Sarah? Uh, I don't think I have anything. Mr. Jones said. Yeah, I just want to say I, I enjoyed the joint meeting with the school board last night. Um, 
and I am looking forward to uh, finding more ways that we can collaborate with them, um, mostly around uh, revenue generation um, and uh, and our shared interest in um, branding for the city and for the, the school district. In the word of uh, how wonderful we both are. Yes. That's all. I want to agree with you on that, that the meeting was, uh, I thought the meeting was a very good meeting and um, appreciate the work that um, Superintendent um, Z.R. has done and the board of trustees and staff are uh, tremendous. And when they, um, I was really, I did not know about the uh, national recognition that they had gotten. That was very exciting. And I wanted to ask, uh, see them continue. I think that was very good. Um, there is a group that has been meeting now for the last probably close to four years called the Ypsilanti Council of Elders. And it is patterned after the Council of Elders in uh, Howard County, Maryland. The Mr. Matt Austin came here with the National Association of African Americans in HR. And they have in 2018, they had their 20th anniversary here. And it all started with a simple call from the uh, Ypsilanti Visitors and Convention Bureau, a um, gentle young man that was working there at the time. But when they came, he fell in, they fell in love with Ypsilanti and they made a five year, signed a five year MOU with the uh, school district. Howard County, Maryland, the schools there were uh, very much in the same situation as, as the same uh, productive level that if YCS was five years, four years ago. And they are now one of the top three districts in the city. And that group, the group of elders, uh, council of elders has been working and uh, promoting the school and uh, before the pandemic did provide a scholarship. And so they are working um, closely with the school district, with uh, Miss, with Dr. Hawkins and also uh, Superintendent Ross. So uh, that group will continue to work with them and hopefully we'll continue to see more and more uh, recognition for the school district as it, we go forward. Um, one of the things that I wanna mention, we, um, I uh, passed it on we got a letter from um, the from a resident in um, Angler Circle. We talked a little bit about it before the meeting uh, about rats. And if we can get on that, and if we can kind of keep them isolated so they don't just start spreading throughout the city, and hopefully we they have not. I don't know if any there have been any other reports, but. Um, I can certainly understand what the resident was saying about let's get rid of them. Um, I have some a couple of announcements. One, some of you can see the shirt that I'm wearing. It says we are unbeatable. And this is the shirt from, I believe it was last year or year before last, from the men and women and men working to make a change. Uh, they host a domestic violence uh, walk every first Saturday in October. So that is coming up this Saturday uh, and it starts at eight o'clock. They will start uh, registering people. And um, I think the, the call, they're asking for to walk, they're asking for a 30, at least a $35 donation. They were hoping that people would um, also uh, get donations from others to support their walk. This year, their goal is $7,500. And that $7,500 will go to a family that has been displaced because of uh, domestic violence. So it will be to um, help with rent, help them get resettled and uh, make some provisions for children if children are there. So I encourage everyone, it's gonna be at Park Ridge uh, Park at this Saturday at eight o'clock. 
So if you're free, um, please, it's always a nice event. They start out with a, a warm up of um, Zumba. So, uh, so you're not just starting out cold with your walk. So please, if you can, join them. On October the 8th, there will be a violent intervention rally. And this uh, has come out of uh, the community violence intervention team's uh, effort that's going around. And there was a group uh, called together by Pastor uh, Cannon. And out of that, those, uh, that group, they had wanted, they came together because they wanted to do something about the violence. They joined in with the community violence team and they have come up with, there will be a rally from 10 to one on uh, October the 8th at Park Ridge Center. Uh, there will be, uh, they'll have uh, several speakers have been invited to speak and there will also uh, several pastors are being invited to, to offer prayer. So it'll be a combination of uh, rally, prayer rally, prayer rally and speakers rally. Um, so, and there will, they will have entertainment. There will, and they will be uh, serving a lunch of hot dogs, chips, and cookies, and I believe pop or water. So uh, please, they would like as many people to be there as possible. And considering the uh, street gun violence that we have seen in our, um, well, in our county, because we don't always hear about it in that what's going on in an arbor. However, we do have a member in the team that is from an arbor and he um, is, he lets us know that there are things that are going on also, street violence there also, so please. Um, wanted to say a little bit about the disturbance that was in City Hall you know, a couple of weeks ago um, that we got the report on. Uh, it was really quite disturbing to hear that someone was able to come into the building with uh, three concealed weapons and get up to the third. And I'm not sure if they got all the way up to the fourth floor or not, but that was, it was really quite um, disturbing to read it. And Mr. Barr was kind enough to share the police report with me. And the police report was even more disturbing and disappointing in the fact that a, an individual got all the way in the building up to the upper floor with three concealed weapons. Um, when you think about all of the, the mass shootings that are going on, that makes one, at least it makes me shudder to think about what could have happened. It could have been a totally different uh, outcome than what it was. But what disturbed me even more was that the gentleman was allowed to leave with the weapon that he had no permits for, um, rather than and the left with the weapon. And it seems like without him having permits, that um, should have been enough for at least for the weapons to have been confiscated if he had not been arrested. But uh, I think we need to um, to ask our police to do a little bit better job of uh, protecting our staff. We I don't want to see any of our staff hurt or injured. And I think that um, I know we got the report that the um, weight in and out of the building was changing, and some of the the uh, movement around in the building was also some doors were being closed. But please, we need to do all that we can to keep staff, um, to keep our staff safe. I would hate to hear of anyone within this building, whether it was a staff or a resident that was in to take care of some business being injured by someone coming in. Um, and I don't know if they, I know were they, uh, were the police ever able to locate the gentleman again? Do you want me to answer that or talk about that in my report? You're going to talk about it in your report? I was just going to talk about what we're doing. Oh, okay. All right. But um, 
I don't know. I just, I just believe that we need, I was truly disappointed to hear that the, our police officers just allowed him to leave with the weapon that he came in with. So, um, and that's all that I have for remarks. So, city manager. Thank you, um, Mayor. First of all, um, I guess I'll go ahead and address that. Um, concerning the incident that occurred here at City Hall, um, as we're all aware, uh, there was um, uh, I'm a customer, <laughs> but there was an outsider that was allowed to enter our building um, and to proceed to the third floor as we normally allow uh, bus people in that have business here at City Hall. So there was no way for uh, staff or anyone to know what their intentions were, not with anyone. Um, but uh, we've taken this um, incident um, very seriously. Um, and as a as um, a result of that incident, um, we're working on, as the mayor said, securing the building uh, a little bit more. Um, actually, some of the plans uh, that we were thinking about doing is not allowing uh, people to actually get in the building without being buzzed in, like right here, instead of so far back there. But there are a lot of um, options that we have. So it kind of just opened our eyes a little bit um, to uh, see that, you know, we weren't secure as we needed to be. Um, yes, it is correct that um, the person was allowed to uh, leave the building. And since then, we've done some investigation to find out why that occurred and why they weren't apprehended at that point. But at that point, there were a lot of unknowns. At that point, um, if they had a license to carry, you know, a lot of things like that that were not um, known. And the police officers um, made the best decision that they thought at the point, at that point. But since going back looking at everything, uh, we decided that some things could have been done differently. And so those officers have been addressed. And so we've taken this as an opportunity to. Um, address all the officers because we think it can't happen to us, but it's right at our door. So as a result, um, all the officers um, are being, um, you know, debriefed. And then also our staff, we're going to um, go through some analyst training, some active shooter training, some things that we can do um, as well in those types of situations. Uh, yes, the person has resurfaced and has appeared again um, at the police department, not here at City Hall, but they want to come to City Hall. But um, at this point, I have instructed um, all staff not to let the person pass the first floor, and we have distributed photos of that person so everyone knows um, how to recognize that person. So it's unfortunate that it happened. I am grateful that none of our staff was harmed, but it was quite um, alarming. So we're doing what we can do right now with the physical structure, and there's more to come uh, to tighten up the security in the building. So stay tuned for that um, added cost. Um, Mayor, is there anything else you want to know about that before I move on? No. Okay. It, it's just. I too am great, well, I'm very grateful that no one was hurt and grateful that staff is uh, working on making the building and staff more safe. Thank you. So yeah, there, there, um, stay tuned. There will be some um, building adjustments as well and some training as well. Uh, another part of my report is uh, I just wanted to report that we're um, busy working with YPD on uh, staffing solutions. We know that they are down officers. We just lost another one who took a job in Redford, uh, but we he was one of the five that we thought. So it's not an additional one, but we're um, working on um, um, additional staffing solutions that will not take as long to as it would to take a police officer to come up to speak. If you know what I'm saying, there's civilian 
positions that we can do that would take some of the uh, administrative things off of sergeants and lieutenants and put them on the road. Okay, so those are some of the things that we're looking um, into while we are strategizing um, to see if we may implement um, uh, sending them to police academy. These are things that uh, we're pricing out, things that we're looking um, at what other communities are doing, and that is an option. But as we know, that's like a three year period. And so we're looking at how we can, um, I don't want to say lure them here, but make it more attractive to come here and commit to being an officer. So that's long range, but in the short range, we're going to do some reorganizing so that those that are trained can be out on the street um, and we can have some civilian officers, I mean, some civilian people doing some of this administrative work that takes up their time. Um, along with that, um, I'm glad to hear that you are uh, going to make some of those changes that um, will certainly increase the numbers for, uh, that are available for the street. There, uh, I got two or three phone calls from the same person and also a, a message that I guess there is a rumor going around um, the city um, that we're going to dissolve the police de department, that we're not going to have um, department of pol police department anymore, any active police. So if some way or other that could be squashed, I did um, respond back to the person that there were no plans for us to dissolve, to dissolve the police department, that the police department would be continuing, that the, the chief is leaving on the 30th, but there is already an interim chief uh, scheduled to step right in, and that we will continue to have uh, city police services. So if maybe there could be something um, put out in the um, address on, uh, the, on Facebook or whatever, however the city um, I, had, I hadn't heard that at all, but yeah. I will, um, once um, our interim gets in place, I, I'll introduce them to the community or we introduce them and make a statement at that point that I hadn't heard anything or got any questions, okay. but, but we will reiterate that. Okay. I got calls while I was, I didn't take the calls because I was at a conference and was not um, able to just take calls. But um, I got two calls. I got what three calls Friday, one Saturday, and then Sunday, and then one yesterday from the same person with that. And that was the, the message that they had. So, but I tried my best to assure them that no, we're not dissolving. Yeah, I have heard that at all. Okay. So, um, next, I'd like to report that all staff evaluations have been completed. Um, that we are nearly complete with all of the labor negotiations. TPOAM, which was formally asked me, has uh, ratified their contract, and I'll bring some specifics to council in a report. Uh, the fire IAFF, they have TA every item, and it's going to their body for ratification. So the only one left outstanding is POAM, police officers. Okay. And it's just some housekeeping stuff. And so we're pretty well a good, good uh, pace with them, and it's almost complete. So that is, I love, I love this because it was a hard time. Um, I also want to report that um, I'm busy working with Joe Economic Development on the approved developments that we approved, and actually on some prospective developments. Uh, coming forward that, you know, just stay tuned, we'll give you some information um, as it um, becomes available or it becomes a little bit more solidified. And I think that's all I'll say for now. Oh, I don't want to forget this. I want to congratulate um, our new uh, Department of Public Services Director, Bonnie Wessler. Yes. There. And uh, we're glad that Bonnie is here. 
my um, was already in DPS. It's like things just kind of worked themselves out and got her feet wet. And it's only been a couple of weeks, but she's doing a fine job so far. So uh, I believe that's all I'll say for now. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, uh, City Manager, for that. Um, for those communications. Okay. Other communications. Um, well, before I go on, did, was there anyone from any council person want to comment on the say something on communications from the city manager? Oh, I was just say, you know, I, I meant, meant, forgot to mention during my uh, business about the evaluation we are supposed to be doing for uh, city manager and city clerk, and I think we just need to move on with those. It's, we've only gotten just a couple. So I'm going to send a reminder email, and then I think, you know, like I said, we need to move forward and get those to the city clerk and city manager for their review and then you know whether they want to publish or not and get those done in October. Okay, yes. So because they are tasked to and to um hopefully the council members that are not present will uh go over the um tape from this meeting and please all council members if you have not turned in your evaluations to uh Ms. Simmons please get them in uh, it's unfair to her who is uh, coordinating it all, but it's even more unfair to both the clerk and the city manager to delay. Those were due back in July, and now we're coming up on October the 1st. So please, if you have not done it, please do it and get it in. Thank you. All right. Um, Let's move on to communications. October 18th, City Council and Planning Commission joint meeting, and we will meet at EMU Student Center. Um, when in the past, we met at McKinney Hall. We we're actually meeting in the Student Center. Correct. I have a problem with that. They're parking for their student center is extremely expensive. We'll be getting vouchers. You would say what? We will be getting vouchers. Oh, we will have vouchers. Okay, thank you. Um, okay. Well, any public comments? Do we have anyone virtually? We have no one in the audience, so, okay. If um, anyone attending virtually would like to make comment, please raise your hand now. No hands are raised. Okay, thank you. Um, well, being no public comments, uh, Mr. Jones Chan. Resolution number 2022-230 resolved by the Council of the City of Ypsilanti that the City Council meeting be adjourned on call by the mayor of three council members. I so move. It's been moved and supported. The meeting is adjourned. Oh.